Okay, we are all set. Go ahead, Brittany. Okay, well, thank you guys all, first of all, for having me. I'm super excited to come um, just chat with you about travel um, and just kind of talk through basically some different ideas and just kind of inspire you guys for traveling. And um, we got some virtual travel in there right now because I know that right now physical traveling is off the, off the table, but I got some virtual travel ideas just to keep the travel bug inside all of us alive. So um, this is just kind of a brief itinerary for what we're all going to talk about, do a brief introduction. Um, I have a little test your knowledge about how many of the most popular travel sites you guys can recognize from their picture. Um, after that, we'll talk about sharing your travel memory. Again, feel free to type into the chat box your favorite travel memory. I'll talk about some of the top travel destinations, different ways of travel, tips on booking, traveling tips, um, give some virtual travel ideas. And then lastly, we have some travel trivia. So again, for the share your memory, uh, test your knowledge, and for the travel trivia, just remember to take advantage of the chat box. Okay, so first of all, it's nice to meet you all. Um, as Christine mentioned, her and I have uh, known each other since high school. Uh, my name is Brittany Bartelt. I actually am a travel uh, consultant by trade. Um, so I have been in the travel industry for about five years now. I've worked both as a travel agent uh, and I also worked as a travel supplier. So for one of our companies called Insight Vacations, um, I was a sales representative for them. So I was a traveling sales rep for about a year. Um, so I've had a couple different perspectives on the travel industry, which um, I love being able to have a little bit of a different perspective on things. Um, some of my favorite destinations, because I get that question a lot. Uh, Paris is always top of my list. I love food, as Christine mentioned. I love um, the history and the architecture. Uh, Paris is one of my favorite places to go, and I would hop on a plane tomorrow and go there if I could. Um, and also Greece. I had the pleasure of doing Greece a couple years ago. Um, we did both land and cruising, and it was, I mean, the food was amazing. The people were amazing. The scenery. I have never seen so many shades of blue in my life of the ocean. Um, so those are some of my top places that I love to travel. The, the bottom left picture is actually a cooking class that I did in Paris. Um, so it was really neat to be able to make some croissants and learn firsthand. Uh, you will hear me talk about food a lot. I hope you like it. If not, I apologize in advance because like Christine mentioned, that's, that's why I travel. That's why I do what I do. I absolutely love uh, to travel and to eat. <laughs> Um, some of my other hobbies outside, of course, traveling. Um, I love cooking and baking. I love reading. I love spending time with my little pup, Roxy, who that's a picture of her. She's a little blue healer mix. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. Uh, so let's jump in and let's test everyone's knowledge. Here, let me pull up the chat box. Okay. Yes. So real quick, there is a dark box covering your presentation in my view. Oh, it's probably the videos. Does that help? Yes. Okay. Can, if I, if I do this, can you see my, can you see the chat box? Does that block it too? Uh, the chat box is showing up as a black box on the sharing as well. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to hide it. So Christine, if you wouldn't mind, just kind of keep an eye on the chat box for me so I don't block the screen. Um, and then just, if you want to let me know what people say, does that yep. work? I can do that. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, first one, what is this? This is an easy one. I had to start it kind of easy. What is this iconic travel destination? Anybody type it in the chat box, Christine? I think people are working on it. Yep, here we go. We okay, got some perfect. coming in of Paris. Yes, perfect. Okay. Um, all right. There we go. All right, next. What is this iconic destination? Tourist attraction. We've got Rome and Rome. Yes, this is the Colosseum. Good job. Okay. All 
So these are actually, so while you guys were typing where I got these, so these are um, the top 10 tourist destinations in the world. So if you Google the top 10 destinations, these are going to be the top 10 that come up in order. So Eiffel Tower was the first and so on. I have New York came through. Perfect. The Louvre. Good job. Okay. All right, nice. Diane said India. Good job. Taj Mahal in India. There is no trick in you guys. Ah, and then Kathy swooped in with the Taj Mahal. Perfect. Okay, we got Great Wall of China. Good job. This one's a little bit of a tricky one. Well, it's about time. You got to give them a tricky one. <laughs> Barcelona from Shelby. Yes, yes, absolutely. So this is the Sag Sagrada Basilica. Way to go, Shelby. And this one, of course, is an easy one. I don't know that it's easy for me. Central Park, <laughs> New York City. Yes, <laughs> all right. Uh, San Francisco. Awesome. Golden Gate Bridge. And last one. Interesting. Inca Machu Picchu. Yes, Machu Picchu in Peru. All right, Good Kathy job. and Shelby okay. got that one. So um, hopefully that got some of your level inspiration. Awesome. Good job. Um, okay, so uh, Christine, if, if anyone typed in the travel box, their favorite or the, the travel box, <laughs> the chat box, their favorite memory, if you want to, if you want to share those, um, who they're from and what their tra favorite travel experience was. Yeah, if you guys want to keep chat adding those in, we did have one right off the bat, which was from Kathy Herman. She shared that her and her spouse enjoyed their trip to Australia. The people were fantastic. And of course, they saw all the exciting things. Uh, Kathy, if you want to share which city was your favorite, um, I'd love to know that. I also went to Australia. Wonderful. I have not been to Australia yet, but it is on my list and I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. For me, Brisbane was the best. Is there, is that the, is that the only one we have right now? That's the only one, but I think I see some people. Okay. Oh, perfect. Shelby cool. just did, she did a barefoot cruise to uh, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao snorkeling. Oh. Ooh, I've been to Curacao oh, as well, God. and that's amazing. Um, Diane Walker went to on an uncruise boat trip to, in Alaska. Uh, Kathy Herman loved uh, Melbourne. Oh, um, and especially I've, I've the heard food amazing markets. about their cruises. Uh, Lori Walters' favorite was graduation trip with their youngest son to the Black oh. Hills and the Rocky Mountains. Oh, fun. That's awesome. Yeah, beautiful area. Okay. Okay, well, I don't, oh, and then we've got Diane Walker did a UWSP trip to South Africa. That's great. She probably did that with Adventure Tours. Oh, How amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Um, awesome. Perfect. Well, continue. For anyone that didn't share, if they still want to, please feel free to keep using that chat box. Well, we can go through at the end. Um, I'm going to keep going. But thank you so much for sharing. I love hearing about everyone's travel experiences, what their favorite was. Um, 
Yeah, like I said, I love talking about travel. So thank you so much for sharing. Okay, so next we're gonna jump into the top travel dest destinations, um, what some of the top travel trends are, what makes them popular. These aren't necessarily the top, like the top 2020 or 2021 destinations. Um, what they are, are some that like I get requests for a lot. So some of the really popular ones that over and over we see people requesting a lot. Okay. I just saw someone try to talk. Can everybody hear me okay and see my screen okay? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Diane. Okay, so first we're going to talk about Ireland. Um, Ireland is one of the most popular destinations that we get a lot for a couple reasons. I mean, one, for those of you that, that have been, you know, and for those of, the, of you that haven't, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's also a nice quick flight for us. So um, out of Chicago, it's a six hour nonstop flight, which is really pretty quick. I mean, even to get to the West Coast with a layover, you're probably looking at about six hours of travel time. So it's a nice quick flight. Um, it's an English speaking country. Um, the people are very warm. They're very welcoming. Um, and it's just an overall beautiful destination. So a couple of the top cities, um, and again, I'm just going to touch on the highlights, but there's many more that go along with this. Um, Galway, uh, Dublin, of course, being um, the main city that a lot of people fly in and out of. Um, there's amazing attractions like the Cliffs of Moher, uh, Giant's Causeway, which is what's pictured here. Um, absolutely beautiful place to go visit. Uh, very unique. As you can see, the, the pictures don't really do it. This is a really good picture. They don't do it justice. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, Aran Island, which is these islands off actually out of Galway. Um, beautiful little, they're like fishing village islands. They're, they're cute and they're quaint and they're very quiet and relaxing. Um, there's um, just a lot of really unique aspects of the Aran Islands. There's um, a seal colony there. They do a lot of um, sheep shearing, so you can buy like some like homemade products there. Um, just a really neat place and kind of an off the beaten path one that people don't talk about too much. Um, I actually had the pleasure of going there a couple years ago and, and ever since it's been, whenever people go to Ireland, that is one place that I always recommend trying to fit in for a day trip is the Aran Islands. Um, and then of course, Trinity College, where we got the Book of Kells. Um, there's a lot of neat places in Dublin. I mean, there's the Jameson Distillery, there's a Guinness factory right in um, Dublin where you can learn how to pour the perfect pint of Guinness. Uh, it's actually a really neat uh, museum factory as well. You can make your way through the, um, basically through the whole factory. They show you about um, just kind of the process of Guinness and how it started, some of the marketing techniques, which are very, very unique. Um, really, really just overall neat experience. And then of course the beautiful ring of Kerry. Next. Uh, okay, so next we're going to go to Italy, another very popular one. Um, this is one that probably will always be popular because it's a, it, it just, um, for those of you that have been, those of you that haven't, I mean, I'm sure this is one of the ones that you hear about a lot that you know a lot. People that have gone to it that go to it over and over again, I mean, it is just a beautiful destination and it really has a lot to offer. Um, very unique experiences all in the same country. So um, some of the top cities, Rome, Venice, and Florence, those three in and of themselves are very, very unique. Um, Rome, of course, has the history, it has the Colosseum, it has Vatican City. Um, Venice has all the beautiful canals. Um, Florence is more in the Tuscan countryside, so even only a couple hours of I drive it, they all three offer a very unique experience. Um, attractions like the Colosseum, uh, Vatican City, Leaning Tower of Pisa, Panthenon, Capri, um, just a lot of really different historical places. And I mean, you know, you couldn't go to Italy and not try the food. Um, some of the popular experiences that people go there for, pasta making, um, glass blowing in Venice, all the beautiful vineyards, tours and tastings, uh, truffle hunting. Um, I mean, just a lot of really, really, um, it's a good destination for a lot of different types of people. If you like history, if you like architecture, if you like food, if you like, um, you know, just looking at the scenery, um, it, it, it's just a beautiful destination. And again, I feel this is one of the destinations that will probably always be a very popular touristy destination. 
Mexico Caribbean. Of course, we can't talk about popular destinations uh, in Wisconsin without bringing up Mexico and the Caribbean. Um, of course, due to uh, all the cold and snow we get, that's one of the things we think about once that cold weather hits. Um, and it's a very popular destination and it's really quite easy to get to from, from our area. Um, so some of the popular cities, that, again, there, there's many, many out there, but some of the most popular ones, um, Cancun. Um, Cancun is a really quick flight from Chicago and Milwaukee, just a couple hours. There's a lot of different type of, dust of um, all-inclusives there. They have a really, really wide variety. So really something to fit all different types of travelers, um, whether it's, you know, adults only, family friendly, small boutique. Uh, yeah. Punta Cana is another beautiful destination. Um, Punta Cana is actually known for their beaches. They have really nice, long, beautiful beaches for the most part. Um, one thing about Punta Cana, um, they aren't necessarily known for their food. Um, it can sometimes tend to be a little bit bland, but for beaches, it's a beautiful destination. And I really think that they've come a long way in their food. Last time I was there, I really enjoyed it. Um, Negril, of course, beautiful seven mile beach in Negril, Jamaica. Um, Jamaica is a very fun loving destination. Um, the, I once had it explained to me that the Jamaicans walk like they have a song in their stuff, and it's so true. They just have such a carefree way of life that's infectious. They just love being alive, and it, it, it's very hard. You can't go there and not get that same relaxed feeling about life. So, it's a really neat destination. Um, just for, for what it what it does to you. Um, Puerto Vallarta and Xapa, those are on the Pacific side in Mexico, so a little bit different of a, an experience. Um, those are gonna be um, a little bit more kind of like the old town Mexico. So Cancun is a pretty touristy part of Mexico, really. Um, it's a really popular all-inclusive destination. So if you still want that all-inclusive experience in Mexico, but you want a little bit more of an authentic, um, type feel. Um, Puerto Vallarta and Xtapa are really good options. Um, Puerto Vallarta also op offers the um, whale watching during certain seasons, which is really neat. Um, Cabo, um, which is up north a little bit on the Pacific side, again, a beautiful destination. Uh, one thing to note about Cabo is actually a like, single destination. Um, it's actually no, because uh, of the way the tides go around the, around the bend there, um, there's very few resorts that offer swimming in the ocean. However, a lot of them have beautiful pools and it's a very lively area. So if you like kind of a fun nightlife, Cabo is a really good option. Um, and there's other islands too, like Turks and Caicos, Aruba, um, Curacao. Uh, there's a lot of different islands as well that I didn't mention on here because, you know, <laughs> of time, um, but the list goes on and on and, and each of them have each of them have a different uh, personality to offer. So depending on what type of feeling and vibe and, and experience you want, determined what type of, what destination would be a good fit for you. Um, of course, these are all gonna be all-inclusive resorts. Um, most, of, most of the people that go to Mexico Caribbean, that's what they're looking for is the all-inclusive type experience. Um, they do have other options if that's not what you're looking for, but that pretty typically is what, um, what the big draw is to that area. Um, and, and there's a lot of different experiences too. So um, I know when you think all inclusive, you think going and sitting and laying on a beach for a week. And some people do that and some people absolutely love it. Um, but some people like to go to these destinations for what they offer as well. Um, I already talked about Seven Mile Beach in the Grill, this beautiful long stretch of beach in Jamaica. Um, if you've ever seen a picture of a beautiful beach in Jamaica, it is probably going to be Seven Mile Beach because that is the big popular one. Um, a lot of these de uh, destinations offer amazing snorkeling and diving experiences. Is they have catamaran cruises to go to a secluded island for lunch or maybe like an afternoon sunset booze cruise catamaran, um, swimming with the dolphins, going and visiting ancient ruins. We went to uh, Tulum a couple years ago and one of the things we visited was the Tulum ruins. So um, just a really neat experience and you know it, it kind of gives you a more personal feel of these destinations when you get to see these ruins and you see how they live and, and you can kind of get a feeling more for the people. Um, so there's a lot of history in these destinations as well. Um, they have ATV tours, so if you like something a little bit more adventurous, um, they have adventure parks like Shelhan Eshkaret where they have zip lining and um, swimming in cenotes and um, just different types of things. You can go visit local schools. Um, some people when they like when they go on these inclusives, they like to bring something like you know coloring books or um, coloring uh, you know 
crayons, pens, papers, just some fun stuff like that. And they'll bring them to the local schools and, and they love it. They love having these um, little gifts dropped off for them. They have jungle tours. Um, I mean, food, coffee, rum tours, tequila tours, the list really goes on and on. So when you think of an all-inclusive in Mexico Caribbean, you know, keep in mind, it's not always just going and sitting on a beach for a week. There's a lot of different type of experiences that you can incorporate into your vacation to really make it your own and customize it. Thailand. So this one has been popular for I think maybe about the last year or two. We've been getting a lot of requests for it. Um, it's a beautiful destination. I actually had the pleasure of traveling there in November um, and could see firsthand why it was why, why it's become such a popular destination. Um, and, and in my opinion, what makes it so amazing is the variety that it offers. So um, some of the popular cities, Bangkok, Koh Phi Phi, Chiang Mai, um, this picture that's listed. So this is going to be like the island. So like the Koh Phi Phi type experience. There's a lot of islands down there. So you can see, I mean, it offers beautiful beaches, unique scenery, uh, but then you go, I mean, Bangkok is a huge city. Uh, they they have all sorts of different, I mean, they have temples, they have food markets, they have um, tuk-tuk rides, they have a, a big city experience, but um, it's very, very unique. The people were very, very warm and welcoming. Um, and then you can go up to northern um, Thailand, like where Chiang Mai is, um, Nan is an upcoming destination up there, and that's more into um, like the rustic jungle type experiences. That's where you'll get the elephant experiences. We can go visit an elephant sanctuary. Um, so it, Thailand itself really has such a, a varied offering for people. I mean, it has a history, it has unique architecture, it has uh, the temple, it has elephant experiences, it has these beautiful beaches. The food was amazing. Um, I wasn't, before I had gone there, I wouldn't say that um, Thai food was one of my favorite. I, I liked it, but I wouldn't say that it was something that I couldn't wait to have. Um, went there for a week and of course ate Thai food all day, every day, and now I cannot get enough of it. I mean, the food was so amazing. Some of it was spicy, some of it wasn't spicy. Um, in that area of the world, there's a lot of, uh, a curry is a very popular dish. And um, I, I didn't realize before I went, how many different types of curry there really is. Um, and, and each of them have their own little um, spice that makes it unique to that. So, so the Thai, Thai curry is different than the Indian curry, which is different than other curry. Um, they all have their own kind of unique, um, really they're just like unique flavor. Um, the food is absolutely amazing. I, I can't wait to go back and have more, um, more curry because it was out of this world. Um, again, some of the big attractions, so Koh Phi Phi Islands, Elephant Sanctuary, Jungle Hikes, um, these beautiful islands and beaches. Um, sailing is a very popular way to experience it, these islands. Um, some of the um, actual experiences that you can have, again, the bathing with elephants, they have really good cooking classes. Um, they have really unique floating markets, which is kind of like a farmer's market around here, except for they're floating. Um, so that's a really unique experience in and of itself. Um, they have tuk-tuk rides, so where you can go on those. Um, they give you a little tour on them. You can take them. To, they really kind of work almost like a taxi or an Uber on here. I mean, they're, they're really just, they're sitting everywhere. You ask them how much to take you to this, to wherever you want to go, and they, and they take you there. It's, um, it, it's a very, very fun experience. It's, it's a, a very unique culture, and um, again, I, I, I would recommend it to just for any type of traveler because of the variety that it offers. Australia, I know a couple of you, Christine included, mentioned that you've been there. This one I put on here, not necessarily because we get, because you, you hear about it often, but, but Australia is like a, a big trip for people. I mean, when we talk about once in a lifetime bucket list experiences, Australia is usually on that list. Um, and for many reasons, I could probably let Christine take over and she could probably tell you more about it than I have because I haven't been there. Um, but Sydney, Cairns, Melbourne, Brisbane, we've talked about um, the Great Barrier Reef, Uluru, 12 Apostles, King Canyons, Blue Mountains. Um, experiences like the Opal Mine, Sydney Opera House, which is pictured here, um, diving the Barrier Reef, um, Outback experiences, walking up the Sydney Har Harbor Bridge. Um, again, it's one of those destinations that just has so much to offer. Um, and it's, it, it's so unique and it's so different. Um, again, this is a really popular one that we get for those once in a lifetime experiences. Okay, so next we're going to talk a little bit about travel style. So there's a couple different 
ways, you know, when talking about traveling that, um, that you can travel. Um, and, and each has its own, um, you know, each has pros and cons for them. So a lot of what it boils down to is just what type of traveling you prefer to do um, and how you, how you like to get around, um, if and when you like to meet people, what type of experiences that you want to do. Um, so we'll, we'll jump right in, I'll go through a few. And I do have a video to go with each of them. Um, fingers crossed that the sound works on them. Uh, but I just wanted to give, show you a little video just to kind of um, help you kind of dive a little bit deeper and seeing some of the experiences that are included in these different type of travel styles. Um, if you already know what type of travel you are, wonderful. If not, maybe one of these videos or um, something can kind of help inspire you to try a new way of travel maybe or um, Hopefully it just inspires you. Um, so cruising. So cruising, of course, is a very popular one. Uh, there's a couple different types of cruising, again, depending on what type of experience you want. Um, so there's sailboat cruising with sleeping quarters. So these usually are going to be maybe eight to 16 passenger sailboats. Um, you're going to sail around to the different islands. Um, a couple of the popular destinations for these would be like the British Virgin Islands, uh, Croatia, Thailand. So places where there's a lot of islands that are uh, islands or ports that are that are pretty close together um, because you know you're not going to go very long distances on a sailboat um, and they're also going to be in destinations that have um, that, are, that are protected in the respect that the waters are going to be very calm you're not going to go out on a um, you know on, on a wavy ocean in a sailboat so um, they're going to be usually seasonal trips and they're going to be in a place where the um, the, the weather is going to be calm where it's you know very smooth sailing as they say um so next small ship cruising so um these can still you know ocean um cruising um, alaska uncruise would be a would be a great example of the small ship cruising um so what the small ship cruising is is probably going to be it's still going to be the the large ship experience um in respect that it's going to have you know different dining options um entertainment on board they're going to have um th that similar experience but with fewer people so for a smaller cruise ship you may be looking at two to three thousand people um versus on the large ocean ships you look looking at like six to eight thousand people so um half or less um, a couple of the advantages of that is you um, may get to know people on the ship more um, because when you see you know a couple thousand people is still a lot but when you see them on a regular basis versus seeing six thousand there's a chance that you could the ships are so large for the ocean cruising that you may never cross the same path with people versus on a smaller ship you may be able to meet more people and um, recognize more faces including the staff um, so being able to um, just really get to know some of the staff and recognize them and, and kind of build those relationships. Um, another advantage to small ship cruising, again, depending on the, um, depending on the ship, but sometimes they're smaller and they can get into different ports. Um, some ports are larger, some ports are smaller. So some of those, that's what they fit in. Um, some of the smaller ships may give you a little bit unique, more unique of an experience and some more port options um, because, they also, because they are smaller. Uh, next we have ocean cruising. So ocean cruising is gonna be your typical large cruise ship like Royal Caribbean, Norwegian Cruise Lines. Um, they're gonna be you know, anywhere from four to six passengers. Um, and, and they're really gonna be, so you're going to visit beautiful ports, you're going to visit beautiful destinations, but the cruise ship itself is really a destination um, because, I mean, they have amazing restaurants on board. I mean, a lot of them have Michelin star restaurants um, or chefs that are creating these. They have sommeliers on board. They have uh, world-class entertainment on board every single night. Um, they have shopping. They have, you know, sometimes they have um, like water parks or some sort of, um, like a, a like a surfing experience, um, so so they have enough on board that really it's a destination in and of itself. Um, the ports are kind of like the cherry on top when you get to go off and see the beaches and see the different, um, you know, experience the different destination itself. But really, the cruise ship um, is kind of the focus for the large ocean cruises, oftentimes. Um, so now we're going to switch to the total opposite end of the spectrum: river cruising. Um, so river cruising is going to be um, mainly in Europe. We do have some in the States as well. Uncruise would be one that has a river, um, has a river cruise in the States here. I know one of you mentioned that you had been on an uncruise before. 
Um, so these are going to be usually smaller, usually one to 200 passengers, um, and, and they're going to focus on the destination um, more so than the ship. The ships are going to be beautiful. They're going to still have, um, you know, they're going to have a couple different restaurant options. They're going to have um, the, the, the entertainment is going to be the destination itself. So the cruising uh, there is going to be some times where it's going to be done during the day, but when it is done during the day, it's going to be because you're going down a beautiful scenic area of the river. Um, but river cruising is another one that, that focuses on the destination as well, because each day um, you're going to be off the ship. You're going to be experiencing the destination, doing tours or excursions, um, or even just going and wandering around town and, and getting lost and finding your way again. Um, so river cruising is a unique, um, a, a unique way to see Europe um, or you know other other city, other countries that offer that as well um, but it, it's a nice option for those that don't want to pack and unpack a lot because you still get to see a lot of cities without having to pack up and move to a different hotel all the time and then last but not least we have expedition cruising um, which on cruise actually would probably be on the fine line of expedit would, would probably be closer to expedition cruising because um, with expedition cruising the focus is all on the destination um, they, the, the ships are beautiful, they're, you know, they have meals on board, they have, um, a lot of times they'll have, um, uh, like, uh, travel talks or informational seminars right on board, um, but the focus is really on the destination itself. They want you to experience the destination. Um, they're going to have you out and about doing some sort of experience to, to, involve you in the culture, um, the surroundings, seeing the flora fauna, really all of that is about the destination. Um, one example of an expedition cruise ship, um, which is a, a unique twist on it, is called Hertogruten. Um, if, if no one's heard of them, what they, they are is um, in, up in Norway, they used to uh, still do actually, they, they have mail delivery service that's done by ship. So what Hurtigruten is, is they've taken these ships and they've turned them into cruise, passenger cruise ships. So you go on similar itineraries and you go and you stop and see all these ports, um, but they focus fully on the destination itself. Um, they don't even have TVs in the room. Um, so really, like by the end of the day, you are so tired because you've experienced so much that you just it, that it's for sleeping it's not a place to you know go watch tv or anything like that it's a very um destination focused itinerary you're not going to have the big um international dining options you're going to have local food there where the chef's going to get off the ship go to the market find some food or, or choose their food based on and, and build a menu based on what they find um it's going to be local food it's going to be unique experiences so um galapagos and Nardo, and Galapagos and Antarctica are two other destinations that are known for their expedition cruising as well. So that kind of gives you an idea of the different type of experience or different destinations for expedition cruising, um, but can kind of help you picture, um, you know, Galapagos, Norway uh, on, on the type of experiences that you're going to have. So um, next I have a video on cruising. So this is going to be actually on a river cruise. Um, again, just a quick video just to kind of um, give you guys a visual of what we've been talking about. Um, this is one company called Avalon Waterways. Um, this is one of many, I mean, Viking, you know, well, the, there's a lot of different river cruises. Um, this is just one example for you guys to take a look at. The same company that reinvented river cruise ships with spacious rooms, huge windows, one-of-a-kind open-air balcony, all as included excursions. You can choose to tour the classic sites and take in the stories. Or you can immerse yourself a bit deeper into local culture with an off-the-beaten-path discovery, a wine or beer tasting, or hear stories of local legend and lore. For the more adventurous souls, you can jump on a bike, paddle a canoe, or take a hike. Avalon has made it possible for you to cruise your way.
We've also opened up a world of possibilities when it comes to dining, allowing you to choose where you'd like to dine, from an al fresco lunch in our open-air sky grill, to a more elegant dinner in our glass-walled dining room, or a petite plate in our panorama bistro. You can also choose when you'd like to dine. Our travel choices allow you to custom design your cruise, so you're always doing exactly what you want to be doing. Let us introduce you to the magic of the world, and you can experience it any way you'd like, with all the possibilities aboard Avalon Waterways. Okay, so actually we're going to talk about guided group tours. Um, I know a lot of people when they hear about, about group tours sometimes tend to um, shy away and say, oh, that sounds like nothing I would want to do. I mean, you're with strangers that you don't even know. You're cramped on a bus. You spend hours on the bus just to get off, take one picture, get back on, drive again for hours. You eat at restaurants that are just mass-produced food. They don't care about taste or um, the look the close to the destination anything like that um and, and in all honesty that that's how group tours used to be um they've really come a long way since then and, and they really are a, a very unique experience they're personally i've i've done all these different travel styles and they're personally one um I like how I feel that I experience more um I'm not a morning person so I would never by choice choose to get up at like six or seven o'clock in the morning however when you're in the destination I want to spend as much time as possible so the fact that I'm um I guess forced to get up early is really a good thing for me because I like having the structure because I want to spend all day every day out there experiencing the destination um, I love being able to meet new people, um, talk to people from all around the world, get their different experiences. I mean, there's people that I've met on tours that I, from years ago, that I'm still friends with to this day and hope to travel with them again. Uh, you really can build relationships with people that you meet per week and it's great. And then you travel with them again. Um, and, and I also love the guides. Um, to me, the guide is what makes or breaks a destination um, because, you know, you can go out and you can look at you know the average tree at a place um, but unless you know the history behind it you're just looking at another tree or another building um, so I love that they're going to tell you the history behind it so you know what makes this destination important what makes it so special what's the history behind it like what kind of what gives you the feels about this place um, so I think they're a really really unique way to travel um, and there's different styles too depending on on what you like um, there's small groups um, small groups can be anywhere from you know eight to 20 people um, depending on the itinerary but if you don't like the idea of being with 40 50 people um, small groups are a great option they have active adventure ones if you want to do like a kayaking tour if you want to do a hiking tour um, a biking tour um, they have different options kind of depending on what your level of activity is um, they have kind of the contemporary basic one so this is going to be your traditional um, you know 40 50 passenger bus um, or motor coach and they're going to take you around but they're, they're you're going to meet a lot of people um, you're going to get the most of your of your vacation time because they're going to have a set itinerary they're going to get you where you need to go um, in the quickest time that they can get you there uh, there's luxury so if you like a little bit more high-end if you like to include some Michelin star dining um, if you like four and five star boutique hotels um, they have options that have a little that have that nicer stuff included um, so you don't have to go through and piece it all together um, and then expedition cruising was actually supposed to be on the last one so that's <laughs> that's a typo on that one um, but one more thing about the luxury um, the other nice thing or I guess about guided in general um, the other nice thing that I really like about it is the transportation um, some people feel very comfortable with public transportation in foreign countries some people don't um, once you use it it does become a little bit more familiar but um i love that i know when i go on vacation that i don't have to worry about using public transportation or trying to navigate the um the rail station or the bus station or anything like that so um that's a nice kind of peace of mind that guided tours can offer people 
So this is going to be, again, one of many companies that um, offer guided vacations. Um, this one is going to kind of sit um, not quite a, a little bit more of a high end. I wouldn't quite say a luxury one, but a little bit more of a high end um, type uh, guided vacation um, and a little bit smaller group. So this is one option. Every second is magical. You won't just see a destination, you will meet it, feel it, taste it, and surrender to it. Don't waste time settling for less. Discover the art of traveling in style. isn't imaginary. It's just very well planned. Okay, so next we're going to go to all inclusives. Um, all inclusives are, as I mentioned before, a very popular destination, um, especially for our area because of the cold winters that we get. Um, and there's a lot of different type of experiences that all inclusives offer. Um, and, and the video that I have that goes along with it is a little bit of a longer one, but I think, but I think it's a really good video that that showcases all the different type of experiences that all inclusives can offer um, and, and how important it is to kind of know what you're getting into and know, know what you're looking for to get the right hotel or resort for for the experience you want. Um, there's small boutique hotels um, that can be, you know, 50, 100 people. Um, there's large complexes that could be a couple thousand people. So if you like the more intimate of a feel or if you like a larger complex where there's a lot more activity going on, um, that can kind of determine what type of um, resort to choose. Um, they have family friendly ones, they have adult only options. Um, they have some that are focused more on the destination. They have some that focus on the food. Um, they have some that I mentioned before that have nice beaches, walkable beaches, swimmable beaches, some that focus more on the pool, um, that have nice big large pools because they maybe don't have as quite as nice of a beach. Um, entertainment's another big aspect of all inclusives as well. Some have entertainment every single night. Um, some have it all day throughout the day and at night. Some have maybe like a piano, like a piano jazz band type experience at night to go along with dinner. Um, but other than that, the entertainment um, is more just to, to relax on your own and just to kind of enjoy the atmosphere, um, more of a romantic type feel. So um, there's a lot of different options and aspects that go into all inclusive. Um, and this is going to be a video that shows you the different hotels and, and you can see by the different experience that they have by the like, you know, keep on you know, look at the pools, look at the beaches, look at the number of people. Um, and you can kind of see how much variety there really is when you look at all inclusive resorts.
water parks, some of them have nice beaches, the pools, they each have their own different personalities. Some are a lot more um, authentic to the destination. Some are gonna be new and modern. Um, so that when it comes to all-inclusive resorts, there, there really are a lot of options out there. Um, next, self-guided. So this is going to be um, what's referred to as FIT, it's Focused Independent Travel. And basically what this is going to be is um, an experience where it's all pieced together. So let's say, for example, you did an independent trip to Paris. So um, you'll book the airfare, you'll, you know, maybe take an Uber or a taxi to the, from the airport to the hotel, you'll choose what hotel you want. Um, and then maybe join on like a, you know, like a, a walking tour for a couple hours or a day trip to Versailles or a catacombs tour. Um, so, so for the self-guided, it's really about, you know, you're, you're on your own, you're independent, you know, you kind of, you get almost like the shell of it set. So the hotel transfers to the airport and the airfare. And then inside of that, so like the day-to-day -day stuff, you're really on your own. You're going and exploring um, on your own, maybe taking public transportation to places. Some people, depending on where they go, will rent a car and do like a self-drive type experience. Um, so these ones are for the people that really, you know, they don't want structure. They want to experience on their own. They want to get lost and find themselves again. Um, and just kind of want to enjoy things on their own time. Travel's part of my DNA. I even take different routes to work. <laughs> I started Avanti with the purpose of bringing Europe closer to the travelers who wanted to experience individual travel. Today, Avanti serves over 25 destinations in Europe. countries in Latin America, and many countries in Asia. Getting the logistics of a multi-city or multi-country itinerary can be cumbersome. Avanti understands that and provides the services, whether it's air, private transfers, rail, that's connecting the dots. We really offer a wide variety of products because we have a wide variety of clientele. We have very small, charming, intimate properties from three-room B&Bs in the Cinque Terre up to five-star deluxe properties where you can have everything you want. Travelers love to customize and design travel. If they want to stay longer in one destination, they want to upgrade a hotel, it's absolutely perfect for us because we can adapt their itinerary to meet their needs. Our clients have 24-hour access numbers wherever they go. Any type of thing that pops up during their travels, whether it's good or bad, really having someone on the spot to help immediately is huge. We have different levels of sightseeing that we offer. We have hop-on, hop-off tours for clients who are looking to just get a quick panoramic city sightseeing tour and are on a more limited budget or don't really need the in-depth personalized tour. And then we have fully private, which is totally customizable. It's just you and the driving guide. So you have the ability to fully focus on what you're interested in seeing. The smoke is... The smoke one, is that gorgeous? It's gorgeous. Uh -huh. Every single client that comes has had a personal treatment due to Avanti. For instance, having dinner in a local home with local people, here are the stories which are normally told around the table. It's really a unique experience for the client to live with the locals. <laughs> we have a sacred responsibility to make sure the American traveler gets the most out of their vacation. It's not a question of price. It's not a question of features. It's a question of doing it right and making sure the traveler tells all their friends what a great time they had. Okay, so that one kind of showed, you know, as you can see, when you look at 
doing independent travel, how many different aspects that you can look at really kind of creating your own. Um, whether you just want to have the hotel and the destination and on a daily basis, just go wander and find the, these hidden gems, go and check out different restaurants. You know, you walk by a restaurant and it smells good and you go in and eat there. Um, or if you want to have, you know, hop on, hop off included. Um, so, so it really shows you the different, the different ways that as an independent traveler that you can kind of piece together what works for you and you can include as much or as little as you want. Um, if you, again, if you just want the hotel, you want the bare minimum, you want to keep it at that and then um, just work on a day-to-day -day basis. Or if you want to um, include a few more things, again, the hop on, hop off, and then you can have a little bit more of a structure. So um, that really kind of just shows how many different aspects can come into play when you want to just kind of build your own itinerary and travel on your own. Um, and then last way um, is going to be specialty groups. So these groups um, are going to be a specific type of experience that you're looking for and you're traveling with like-minded people. Um, you know, golfing, culinary, singles tour, wine, beer focus, scuba diving, architecture, photography. I mean, the list goes on and on, but the specialty groups or, or niche focus groups is a way of um, meeting like-minded people and, and all traveling kind of for the same really for the same reason or looking for the same experience. Okay, so next we're gonna go into, you know, how to book travel tips, um, tips on packing, that sort of stuff. So there's a couple of different ways to book your vacation. Um, there's booking online. So again, if you like that independent type um, travel where you just wanna piece it together, you love researching, um, you know, you can go online, you can research, you know, take a look at what airfare works best for you. You can find hotels that, um, that you're looking for um, in a certain destination and you kind of just want to book it directly with those suppliers, um, you can literally go right onto those websites and then you can book them um, direct. You can also call your local travel agents. That's what travel agents are there for is to help you kind of piece it together. Um, so it really just depends on what type of control you want to have over it um, and how involved, you know, basically how involved you want to be um, for the different type of experiences um, when booking. So now when you go into book and you're looking at what's all involved in travel planning, like how do I know if I'm going to look at airfare? How do I know what airfare is going to be a good choice? How do I know what hotel is going to be a good choice? So the first step is usually going to be airfare. Um, airfare is usually kind of the core um, or kind of a good starting place for where you want to travel to um, because it helps, um, it kind of can guide like the price of the trip, for example, you know, sometimes it's flying out on a different date, like a Tuesday to a Tuesday is cheaper than flying on a Saturday to a Saturday. Um, so if you're looking at getting the best price, um, the airfare can help in kind of setting like the dates, the arrival times, um, if it's going to be like an international flight. So like, for example, let's say you're going to go um, over to Europe, um, you know, you'd leave on a Tuesday, you won't get to Europe on a Wednesday. So that'll kind of the airfare kind of helps set the tone for the dates and the timing and everything. Um, a helpful hint when you're looking at airfare, um, make sure to look at airports. Um, make sure that the airport that you're flying into is the same one that you're flying out of. Um, I'm sorry, and, and out of and into. Um, check out layo check out layovers. Um, is the layover going to be at the same airport? Um, sometime like for example in New York, you'll see it where the air the layover actually includes an airport change. Um, so make sure that you're looking at layovers and make sure that the airport you fly into is the same one that you're going to be flying out of. Um, also look at times. Um, you know sometimes air you know sometimes um, layovers can be kind of short. I personally try not to book any layover that's less than an hour. Um, and the reason being is because depending on the airport, it takes time to get from, you know, you may have switched terminals, you may have to go through a security checkpoint. Um, so it can take time to get through those different, you know, the layover. Um, um, so make sure you keep an eye on the train or layover is a long time to spend at an airport. Um, so just keep those in mind when you are looking at airfare. Um, that's something to always keep in the back of your mind. Um, most airline tickets are non-refundable, so make sure when you do book airfare, make sure you look at the terms and conditions of the of the airline. Um, um, each airline has different policies as far as, you know, seats, baggage, boarding passes, like if there's a charge for a board program, um, it, it shoes, like let's say for 
example, you love Delta, unless you want to sign up for the Delta rewards program. And then the first air, airline you can check whenever you're going to fly somewhere is Delta. Um, if you have a preferred one, great. If not, it pays to sign up for each and every one because it's just going to be miles and um, sometimes they expire, sometimes they don't, but at least you have them sitting on your, your account um, and it doesn't cost you anything to sign up for it. Uh, TSA PreCheck Global Entry, um, is it worth it? So this kind of ties into both. So when you arrive at the airport, um, I always recommend arriving early, two hours for domestic, three hours for international. Um, in all honesty, that's probably gonna be way more time than what you need. Um, I personally though, would rather have way too much time than not enough time. <laughs> I've been in situations where I've cut it way too close for comfort um, and it's just an added stress that I that I, I hate putting into my uh, schedule. So um, I always recommend arriving early. Um, TSA PreCheck and Global Entry can also help with the lines for that as well. Um, so there's a charge for both of them. TSA PreCheck is going to give you expedited access through TSA for domestic travel. Um, global entry is going to give you TSA pre-check, um, so the expedited service for that, plus it's also going to give you when you travel internationally and you come back into the country and you have to go through global entry where you, um, you know, show your passport and they, um, you have to fill out that form of like where you went, if you purchased anything and so on, it gives you expedited service through that. So those, depending on how much you travel, um, those really can be worth it to purchase them because then they're going to give you expedited service through that. Um, one thing about layovers, whenever you're flying international um, and you come back into the U.S., the very first airport that you stop at is when you're going to go through global entry. So, for example, if you're traveling down to Cancun and you were coming back through Chicago, but let's say you had a layover in Atlanta. When you got to Atlanta, that's where you'd have to go through global entry. So you'd have to wait in line to basically go back to be admitted back into the U.S. on that layover. So when we take a look, when we're... Um, Thinking about layover times um, on any flight that's coming back into the States from international, you're going to want to have at least a two hour layover um, during that time because that's when you're going to have to go through that um, passport control. Okay, um, so next we're going to look at tours and hotels. So, tours and hotels. So, if you're going to do like a specific tour that starts on a certain day, yeah, can you hear me? Just to, yeah, just to give you a heads up, it is 11. So couple more minutes and then we can oh leave some time for Talk questions. Okay. Um, so everyone who's on too, right now is a good time. If you have some questions for her that you would like to have answered at the end of her presentation, start putting those into the chat so that we have them ready to go. Okay, sorry, continue. Perfect. Okay. No, thank you for that heads up. I was I was not watching the clock. Uh, talking more than I thought I was going to. Okay, so uh, tours and hotels. So um, this is when you would take a look at, you know, if, if you're going to do a hotel, what area do you want to stay in? You know, finding a safe area in the city, finding an area that, it, like, if you want a quieter area, if you want a lively one, if you want a place that has... Um, if you want a place that has a lot of um, activities nearby. Um, is it a clean hotel? How's the staff? Is the breakfast included? Um, what type of reviews do they have online? Um, so those are some hints in looking at tours and hotels. Um, next, look at transfers. Some of them are gonna include transfers in them. Um, you know, take a look at your transfer, your arrival departure times, are transfers included? Are you comfortable taking public trans transportation and so on? Um, because this will kind of help in determining, you know, basically how you get from your ho airport to hotel, hotel back to airport, and so on. Um, insurance is a very important aspect. We always recommend it. Um, at the very least, medical insurance while traveling um, is very important. And of course, looking at cancellation as well, depending on where you're traveling. Um, but again, something that we always recommend looking at whenever you look at purchasing vacation, because a vacation really is an investment. So you want to make sure that investment is protected. Um, a couple travel tips. So make sure you have the correct adapter. Um, make sure you have local currency when traveling. Um, make sure you inform your credit debit card holders that you are traveling. Um, make sure you connect with your cell phone provider to make sure that if you need service over there that you have it. Um, you know, be aware of suitcase restrictions and always make sure you're underweight on your way there so that you have time for souvenirs. Um, and always keep your passports and valuables either in the safe or um, on you while traveling. Um, budgeting for vacation, um, as far as, you know, once you do the initial research, you can get some in pricing just on a ballpark of what it's going to cost. Um, once you have an idea, you can save up, um, you know, do the typical save up for a month. Um, 
the overall vacation cost is going to, you know, once you research that, you'll have that idea. Um, but some guidelines for additional costs. So if you're going to be at a place that's not inclusive, you know, 10 bucks for breakfast, 20 bucks for lunch, 30 bucks for dinner, that's kind of the average. Um, and that's going to be kind of for, for meals only in, in like a higher priced area. So um, just keep in mind that, you know, if you want drinks with dinner, maybe a little bit more or so on. Um, and then tipping is generally not included as well. You know, if it's going to be an inclusive, a couple bucks for lunch, a couple bucks for dinner, a couple bucks for the driver, maid service. Um, but those are things that wouldn't necessarily be included, but you still want to make sure that you include in the budget when you're looking at traveling. Um, tips to stay healthy while traveling. Um, masks when traveling in airports and public transport is always a good idea. Um, if you don't have a mask, you can wear a scarf to cover your mouth. Um, hand sanitizer and sanitizing wipes I always keep on me when traveling. Um, I always have a go-to pharmacy, so I kind of always have the typical um, medication for, you know, like probiotic, Pepto-Bismol, allergy, ibuprofen, just in case you would need something when you're traveling, you can't have access, you don't have access to a pharmacy. Um, and of course, stay hydrated, make sure that you're always making a lot of water. Um, and if, if you, you know, bottled water is usually accessible, you can buy it at, you know, convenience stores and such. This is gonna be the list of virtual travel ideas um, for, it, it, it basically just kind of keep the travel bug alive in all of us. So there's different live camps like for oceans, African wildlife, if you wanna take a tour of the Louvre or visit a Paris opera. Um, and I can, Christine has this link so she can send this out to all of you guys. But um, even though we're all, you know, we're all knocked down right now and we're all safer at home, I mean, you know, feel free to use these. That's what they're there for is for, basically virtual travel while, um, while we can get out there and physically travel. Um, okay, so I have a little test your knowledge now, but um, why don't we open up, um, Christine, if you wanna open up questions, if people have questions, let's take care of those first. And then if we have time, we can do the test your knowledge. Um, and if not, then we can just skip this part. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so just to keep everybody um, in mind as well, if you need to jump off at any point in time, feel free to do that. You do not need to stay on until the end. Um, we did have one question that came in so far. Do you have any suggestions for agents or companies that specialize in, have, specialize or have experience with disabilities? Um, agents, specific travel agents, I do not. Um, however, there are different companies that we work with, um, I guess, depending on what type of travel that you're, um, you know, like that you're looking to do. And I guess what the, what the disability would be. Um, I mean, I'd be, I'd be happy to recommend a couple, um, you know, like if you're looking at cruising or so on, um, I'd be happy to recommend a couple. And, and I don't know if at the, at the end, I do have my, my personal cell phone and my personal email address, um, which you guys are welcome to use if, if you just wanna talk about stuff, if you wanna talk about travel or destinations or um, just kind of a, just a way for uh, someone else to talk to, I guess, during these times. Um, so, I mean, you're welcome to reach out to me. You can, you can send an email to Christine, but um, depending on what and where you're looking to go, I'd be happy to make a few recommendations. So I guess my question would be, if you could pick one place that you would recommend everyone has should go that you have gone, what would that be? Oh, I'm so sorry, you're cutting out a little bit. I got the, if you could recommend one place, that's all that I heard. Oh, no problem. If you could recommend one place that you have been that you think everyone should go to and experience, what would that one location be? Oh my goodness. <sighs> That is a very tough question. In the, in the States, one of my favorite places is New Orleans um, for a couple reasons. I mean, I mean, the food's amazing. As I said, I, I love traveling for food, um, but the history is amazing. The architecture is amazing. Uh, the people are amazing. I mean, it's, New Orleans is such a huge part of, our, of, of the history of the U.S. in general, and I honestly had no idea until I went there the amount of history that really um, is still alive and still visible there. I mean, it was absolutely amazing, um, and, and I would really say the same thing about Washington, D.C. for the same reason. Um, seeing that stuff firsthand, is, it, 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 it's very moving. I mean, I mean, you read about it in history books, you learn about it in school, you see it on TV, um, but actually, like, seeing and feeling and experiencing that still firsthand it is absolutely amazing. Um, so those would be a couple that I'd recommend in the States. Um, international, I mean, oh man, 
That, that's a tough one. I mean, Paris is always one of my favorites, but some people don't like big cities. So that's kind of a hard one. Um, Italy really has a lot for everybody. I mean, they have the food, they have the architecture, they have the smaller quaint cities. Um, so Italy would probably be a really good one for just kind of a, no matter what you like to experience, they're gonna have something that you like there. Nice, yeah. Um, so Kathleen, oh, Kathleen, I am going to butcher your last name if I try. Um, one of our, well, Kathleen recommended um, New Zealand, which I would agree. I mm -hmm. went there and that is an amazing country to visit. Um, Kathy mm -hmm. Herman shared that she took a road scholar trip and then a life trip to New Orleans and she agrees that both were wonderful experiences and included great food. Oh good, good. That sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah a unique destination and it, it's kind of hard to explain unless you've been there but it was one of those places that that I kind of went in with no expectation and came out just completely odd yeah absolutely um, if anybody at this point in time if anybody wants to throw their video on and unmute themselves to ask their question as well we can do that too um, Kurt shared that Big Sur California Highway 1 um, mm -hmm. is a great location to go to and the highway entering Yellowstone from the north stunning drives and panoramic views awesome I'm going to be saving all of these and adding them to my bucket <laughs> list of travel <laughs> perfect okay does anyone have any other questions let's get them in the chat so we can make sure we get them answered if you have them And if not, we can do your test your travel knowledge real quick. We can always, if okay. another question okay. comes up, we can get that taken care of at the end here too. Yeah, perfect. Please just um, just interrupt me if, if a question comes in. Um, and yeah, just uh, so so I'm going to ask some questions and uh, put your put your best guess in the chat box. Okay, what country offers a free public wine fountain? I mean, my answer is whichever one I need to go to next. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to guess too. My guess, and you don't have to tell me if it's right yet because we haven't gotten any guesses from anyone else yet. Um, okay. My guess is Italy because it seems like there'd be something up there, Allie. No other guesses yet? No other guesses, we'll give it another couple seconds here. Okay. Um, so Diane guessed Paris. That is a very good guess, but the correct answer is Italy. You were right, Christine. Where in Italy? Oh, I didn't even write down where in Italy, but I can certainly find out. <laughs> yeah. I think we all need to know that answer. <laughs> it's a hidden wine phone. Okay. Um, one third of the world's airports are located in this country. So name the country that you think it is. Interesting. Diane guessed U.S. and Seattle. U.S.A. is correct. Good job. Okay, next question. 60% of the Earth's lakes are located in this country. Ooh. I entered my own guess because I don't know. <laughs> and again, don't tell me if I'm right until somebody, someone else makes a guess too. My guess okay. is Canada. 
feel like Canada's got that on, on lockdown. <laughs> Uh, Kathy agrees with my guess. Uh, Kurt you guessed right, Russia. Kathy. That is also a good guess, but Kathy and Christina are right. It is Canada. Okay. How many people work at the Eiffel Tower on a daily basis? And this does include construction. So many like maintenance or construction that needs to go on. Huh. I was pretty blown away by this answer, so. Guess hi. <laughs> I was gonna say, I mean, that could be either way, right? It could be like blown away that it's so few or blown away that it's so many. I'll give you a hint. It was blown away that it was so many. Uh, Kurt's guess I appreciate so much. Kurt guessed today zero. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. That's um, great. <laughs> and Kathy said, good grief, that's hard. Maybe around 150. That is a good guess, but the true answer is 600. Wow. Yes. And it includes construction and maintenance and all that. So, um, yeah, 600 people. Wow. I was blown away too. Okay, I still Jessie. really like Kurt's answer. <laughs> yeah, that, that one, that one was, that one was the best. <laughs> Jet lag feels worse when traveling this direction. Oh. My. Uh, Kathy guessed east to west, and Lori guessed Sorry. heading east. West to east, so that is correct, heading east. All right, Lori got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, this one I won't, I won't make anyone guess, but this is kind of a fun fact. So what is Bangkok's official full name? And if anybody feels up to it, they can unmute themselves and attempt to pronounce it. Anybody want to try to anybody want to try to pronounce that? <laughs> that is Bangkok's full official name. Can you pronounce it? I cannot. <laughs> okay. I cannot. During a flight, the temperature outside the plane is around. And I'll give you a hint. It is in Fahrenheit. Um, Diane guessed negative 20 Fahrenheit. My guess is going to be like negative 40 Fahrenheit. Both good guesses. Close, but it's negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And Just sadly, we all know what that feels like from last winter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, I still have a couple more, but have any other questions come in at all? Nope. Okay. I'll just keep going then. Um, okay, so for those that have been to Australia, how many beaches does Australia have? It's kind of a ballpark, not the exact number. So uh, just guess ballpark. I know, but I'm trying to think. I'm like the whole country is one big beach. Um, yep, <laughs> it's a lot. Ooh, my guess is going to be. I'm guessing 250. We'll see if anybody else has any other guesses. Kurt guessed thousands. That is correct, over 10,000. 
Wow. I'm not sure how they designate, you know, where one beach ends, because like you said, the whole country is pretty much really just one big beach. So I'm not sure how they designate where it stops and where it ends, but over 10,000. Hmm. My guess is it probably has something to do with like where rocks interfere and like the beach itself stops and then starts back up again. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would make That's sense. That's cool though. Yeah. Okay. What is the only visible living structure from outer space? Oh, I think I know this. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I think I do. My first oh, Kathy question. guessed it before me. What'd you guess? Great Barrier Reef. Yes, good job. Great Barrier Reef it is. Okay, well, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you having me. I, I hope you I hope you learned a few things and I hope you got some travel inspiration out of this. Um, and again, that's my cell phone and my personal email. So, you know, feel free if you have questions, if you just wanna just talk about travel, call and tell me about your favorite travel experience. experience um, please feel free. So at this point, <laughs> Kathy just shared she wants to go everywhere and I'm with you Kathy I want to now too um, yes. I did before and it's worse now um, so right now guys as we are ending this session um, I'm going to stop the recording at this